In this video, we are going to create a wall-based casework family using the appropriate family template. We will establish reference planes as the framework for the family geometry, flex the model by adjusting the parameters to ensure that all constraints are properly set. When creating families, it's important to know how they are categorized and also located within your Revit project. In this very simple model, we have a few different categories that we can take a look at. First off, I'm going to take a look at this door. This door is part of the doors category. And I can look at that in the project browser by expanding families, looking at doors, and then I can see the different door types that are loaded within this project. When I select the door in question here, you can see that this is a door single flush 36 by 84. There's a hierarchy here that's important to understand. When we look at the door single flush, you can see below that there's a series of different types. 36 by 84 is one of the many types within the single flush family. The hierarchy that we're looking at here is category, family, type, and then within our model, we have individual instances of that type. And within the model, we have individual instances of that type. This is helpful to know because if I were to make a change to, say, the instance parameters, then I know that there's nothing left in that hierarchy below instance, so it's only going to impact that one door. If I were to make a type change, then I know that any change at the type level is going to impact all of the instances, and I can use that same logic as I work my way up. This is important to know because when we create our families, we're always going to start with one of these category templates. And so if I were to create a door family, I want to make sure that I start with the door template. The exercise that we're going to be doing is a casework family. And so I want to make sure I select the appropriate casework template. Within the casework template, we can see that we have two different options here on the top left. We have our family category and parameters, which is going to identify and define the category that we're working with. And then we have our family types, which is where we can go in and we can add multiple types, like we saw with the door family of the 36 by 84. We can adjust the parameters within the family, which will then be loaded into our project. And we can even do rename or removing types from this dialog box. Our first step will be picking the appropriate family template. I'll go to File, New, and Family. And from here, I'm going to look for the casework wall-based Revit family template. This template already has a number of reference planes that we could use as the basis for the creation of our family. First thing we want to do is make sure that they're set up properly. I'm going to select the length parameter, and I'm going to change the value from 4 feet to 6 feet. And what I should see is that all the reference planes move accordingly. I'll do the same thing with the depth parameter and make sure it works. Looks like everything's set up appropriately. To draw this casework family, I'm going to do it from the right side elevation. And you can see here we have another parameter, which is the height parameter. Just to make sure, I'm going to double check that one. It looks like when I change the parameters, everything works out the way it should. The first thing that we want to do is establish any of the other reference planes that we'll need to create this. And what I want to do is I want to create a couple reference planes that will represent the toe kick. Using RP as the keyboard shortcut to create reference planes, I'll draw two more. And then I'm going to associate dimensions to each one of those. You'll also notice that I did not put in specific dimensions right away, because these are things that I can change after the fact. I'll set the depth of the toe kick to 3 inches and the height 
to four inches. Now I have a generic outline that I could use to create my, my base cabinet. To create the base cabinet, I'll use the Create tab, Extrusion, and I can use the Rectangle tool to create the generic mass for this cabinet. Using the Rectangle tool gives me the opportunity to lock all the constraints at each one of these locations which will then allow me to associate the family geometry with the reference planes that we just created. After I've created the sketch and locked all the constraints, I'll go ahead and finish the edit mode. And at this point, I'll go into my 3D view, orbit around, and see what I've created. If we were to look at this in our reference level, you can see that our extrusion does not go the full length of the family. At this point, I'll use the Align tool so that I can line this face with the left extent of my casework family. I'll start by clicking on the left reference plane and the left side of the extrusion. When I use the Align tool, like we just did here, I get the option to lock the constraint. By locking that constraint, what I can do is now associated with the reference planes that we looked at at the beginning of this video. I'll hit escape a few times to get out of that command, and then I'll check my parameters to make sure everything's working properly. As you can see, when I change the length parameter, the family geometry follows suit with the reference planes. I'm gonna go back to my right side elevation and I'm going to use a void to create the toe kick. I'll do the same exact thing, create, but instead of extrusion, I'll go to void forms, void extrusion, use the rectangle again, lock all the constraints, and finish the sketch. Now, when I look at this in the reference level, I'll have the same issue, and I'll want to align and lock to the reference plane. And lock the constraint. Now, when I look at it in 3D, I have a very basic base cabinet that we can use in our sample project.